Um, and then I kind of went with an average of all of them. Yeah, because my my, my jar of DAP uh, says something about so many parts per million, and I'm thinking, well, how in the hell do I figure that out? I don't have a, you know, how am I supposed well, to figure that parts out? Parts per I'm, million are just, um, <laughs> what is it, one part in... It's, mili- in it's million, milligrams per liter. liter. Yeah, milligrams per liter or, or mili- yeah, milligrams per however many grams or whatever. Sorry, but J.D., you have to think in Canadian for I, that I, one. I, I, <laughs> so, it's... Yeah, yeah and, it's, not uh, that, just, it's not that complicated. It's it's one in a million, and you just calculate your volume and how much you're putting in there. Um, I do have and the diammonium phosphate gives you uh, it on paper, though I don't do it in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't either. <laughs> Vicky, yeah, yeah. the diammonium phosphate will give you twenty one twenty one percent nitrogen. So. Uh, one, in other words, one gram in one liter will give you 21 parts per million. So I see. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Vicki, are we going to start like a mead school on got mead live here pretty soon? It kind of sounds that way. Doesn't it? <laughs> I, I and and you know, that stuff is all on the internet. I mean, you yeah, just go out there is. and look on yen and parts per million and what is really recommended for, different wines and different, you know, meads. It's all out there. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, a a lot of us are learning from you experienced mead makers, uh, you know, that have been doing this for a number of years. I mean, I I certainly appreciate even the comments that Chris has made, uh, you know, throughout the uh, times that he's called in, talking about his home brews. And, of course, Vicki and AJ here. We've got an Ask Oscar segment that really deals with some really pointed questions about, mead making but uh, it, cert- it certainly helps to talk to people who do this for a living uh do this as a business uh, uh you know and i, I i'm just uh, I'm, I'm enthused about how simple it not that i'm going to start a meadery in, in sherman Oaks, california mind you but i'm just enthused at how easy it seems to be going from small batch um, you know small batch in in this term i'm talking five gallons at a time or so to several hundred gallons at a time. It doesn't seem like it's all that difficult to. Um, yeah, I, that part really hasn't, to me, hasn't been that difficult. Um, it gets much more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, and being the frugal person, it's like, oh, my goodness, I'm putting how much into that? <laughs> um, but uh, other than that, you know, it's it's really more just trying to move everything and and yeah if you mess the batch up it it would be very bad so i'm very very cautious on what i do and what i change and make sure sanitation is over the top and things like that but um the recipe is pretty close to the same straight through okay and just to qualify jd's statement about me I'm not an experienced meat maker. I'm an experienced <laughs> experimenter. <laughs> so, that's what we, you know what? That's what we all are still, or even at the professional level. Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Good lab technique you know, counts for a lot. We're always experimenting, where it's like you come up with, you know, I think this would sound good, and you experiment. I don't, I don't, for me, anyway, I'll, I'll start with a smaller batch and, and do it in my kitchen, and, and then it's like, yep, I'm going to make that, you know, or I'm not. But, <laughs> That's what yeah. we all do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and a lot of the work is trying to find someone who will like something that you made that you hate. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you got you to gotta look around and find people. Who can I give this to? And luckily, I have a mother-in-law, so uh, <laughs> she gets a lot of... <laughs> she doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> Hey, Chris, thanks for the call, bud. Uh, always no problem. Okay, y'all take care. All right. Hi, right, Chris. Uh, Chris. Bye. Chris from uh, Mississippi. Uh, call. Of course, we had to egg him on a little bit, but uh, I know, he, I mean, it, you know, it was inevitable. He, w- he was going to call in anyway, I'm sure. But uh, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just an awesome, awesome guy. But uh, gosh, Susan, I, 
you know, I, I definitely got to make a trip to North Dakota. I mean, uh, I would welcome to have you up here. Any, any, you know, these tasting rooms uh, are becoming more and more popular. Uh, you know, and, and it's not just meat; it's you know, wine tasting. It's these beer. Uh, I mean, yep. it seems like exactly. every uh, every uh, uh, small brewery nowadays has a uh, you know some kind of a tasting room. So. Any plans to expand your taste room at all or uh, do anything more with it than what you already have? Um, we, we've thought about adding a few more uh, small food items, that type of thing. Right now we just do um, cheese and salami plates, something we can get out fast. And, and we don't, you know, because we, we only keep, you know, it's just the two of us here um, running the tasting room. So we're trying to not hire, hire employees quite yet. Um, so things like that, um, possibly. But other than that, no, I don't plan on. I mean, we've got a pretty big tasting room. I, I mean, I've got tables and chairs sitting around. It can fit probably about 30 people in here. So We've got um, a caller uh, on the line, 9983. What's your name? Tell us where you're from and uh, what's your question. Yeah, this is Derek Piper from Cumming, Georgia, and uh we're looking at starting a meadery here as well, or one of uh, three different meaderies that are getting ready to start up. And uh, one of the things that interests me about you is you uh, you started right up and you have your 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 tasting room going. I was wondering about your advertising. Do you advertise, and what kind of customers do you, do you usually get in? Are they first time people to meet, or are they people um, that have I've known a, about me for a while? I've had a huge amount of people coming in that have never even heard of mead, um, but I, you know, I I was. I get the local newspaper. I was uh, listed in there as opening, and they did a, a little spread on me. I've had um, a couple of our local magazines do articles on me, and so people have seen me through that early on. And then so where they're seeing me on that, and all of a sudden they're like, you know, okay, what is mead? I want to come out and see it. Um, and it's a big group of people from – those just old enough, I've had a few people that are just barely 21 out of, you know, just still in college and they're like so excited mm -hmm. about this uh, to, you know, your grandparents that, you know, their parents made me do something. Um, but uh, I'm surprised actually at the number of people that are coming in that have never heard of me. They're just excited to try it. And yeah, so it's been kind of fun that way. Um, we do, I did start out, you know, when I started, I started a Facebook page and I've got, I think over 800 people now following me on that. Um, so that gets, you know, I kind of send out feelers on there. Um, other than that, we're starting some radio ads that I got, uh, coming out, out, but I think you do need to advertise a little cause if, Unless you're, mm -hmm. we're in a location that's a little bit hidden, so people aren't going to drive by and see our sign that much. So I do need to advertise a little. Um, if you're, you were on a main stretch where people would just see you, or it would be an easy walk in, you might not need to advertise as much. But um, do, do you I advertise like it? Ton of money or? Into advertising, huh? Do you, do you use the word meat, or do you use the word honey wine, or usually? I, I use mead. I use mead, but then I also describe it as honey wine. Um, I always say mead first, and then I'll describe it as honey wine. I don't know. Maybe it, my husband thinks I'm nuts, but I feel like, well, if I don't get out what mead is, people, you know, um, people aren't going to understand what mead is. So um, mm -hmm. I, I just feel like I should educate a little, too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I just always use mead. Um, but I do on my label. Well, and that's a, another thing the federal government makes you put on there. I you know, like my mint mead, I, I have to have um, honey wine with spices. has to be on the label somewhere. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay. So, But I figure the mead is bigger on the label, and then small letters, it's honey wine with spices. So people... That don't understand what mead is can think they're they're going to understand honey wine. So I hope uh, hopefully get both worlds. How about you, uh, Derek? Uh, any any difficulty getting people to understand what mead is uh, in Georgia, or or you know what have you heard down there? Yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, 
to get to get that outside of the, with, with, with the group that might go to Renaissance fairs and things like that that might know. But um, our target market is probably going to be primarily women, um, and uh, maybe women who are like they're they are married to a craft beer guy, but they don't really like beer. But the, the, you know, meat's clearly an ex- exceptional craft product, and even more locally made than craft beer. Um, I, local honey I will that. say, though, I'm, I am actually seeing almost as many men coming in as women. Uh, just, nice. yeah, on Friday I had four guys sitting at the bar. They came in their, you know, early 30s. They were all excited. They all sat there and drank mead for about two hours. <laughs> I was like, all right. Uh-huh. So, That's great. Yeah, um, I know my brother goes up there. He works at some of the... Uh, uh, oil fields and do it for two weeks at a time. So I'm hoping he can pick something up. Oh, yeah. You're at. And, uh, I, I, I kind of get a kick yeah, out of the vision of these early away. oil guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I have actually had a few guys come uh, that have came to Fargo and from the oil fields, I had one group come in. I thought that was kind of cool. But yeah, they said they have a couple weeks off and what do they do? They, Go check out other cities, or else they go home. But very good, uh, Dirk. Uh, thanks for the call. Uh, Thank down you so much Georgia. for your time. You bet. Uh, you know, I'm just. Uh, I go to a couple of forums to get my information about me. Of course, the one that I frequent the most is Home, what I call Home, GotMe.com. But there's another forum out there that pretty much specializes in beer. But they do have a couple of small boards that, uh, you know, wine, mead, that kind of thing. And I noticed that some of the guys, uh, you, know, you know, some of the men who are involved in making beer are starting to become more and more active in the mead part of these forums. So uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, and uh, I, you know, not knowing anything about mead, uh, you know, last January and then uh, finally you know, pretty much recently having my first taste. I actually learned how to make it before I even had any myself. So I was just curious, but I like it. So it's good stuff. Well, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know. I guess people think because women like sweeter things, maybe. But, all right, look at the number of people who are running meaderies. 90% of them are guys. So yeah. obviously, the mm-hmm. you know, guys like mead also. So and I don't want to necessarily focus on just women because, as I said, my husband that was the thing he fell in love with. The first when we started getting into home brewing, he just fell in love with mead. So, um, it may just be going along with the stereotype that you know guys like beer and women like wine. Yeah, yeah I, I think it is, but I. I I try not to stereotype because women like beer also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to try and market as much to both crowds. And it's, uh, and it, you know, I don't think we want to just segment ourselves in and, and make it look that only women are going to like this because that's definitely not the case. Absolutely not. And cool. Look at your calling, people. It's been all yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, it has. Well, and it was funny because uh, when JD started started uh, banging at me to do the radio show, the first thought I had was, "Yeah, and it's going to be all girls." Because <laughs> 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 it's time. It's time. You know. <laughs> I'm sitting here between those two. They keep me. They they keep me going. Believe me. Yeah. Somebody's got to <laughs> do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, well, it's been awful cool having you on the show, Susan. I really appreciate it. Oh, this has been fun. This has been uh, great. We'll probably we'll probably have you back in the future. One of the things that uh, I want to do are some uh, ah, something like a something like a um, a mead debate, like the presidential debate. So we'll have a moderator tossing out questions and have a panel of mead makers, both professional and home, and see what sorts of information we can get. I think it'll be interesting. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. So, all right, well, we'll let you get back to your evening, and thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, it's been well, really thank great you for having, having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.
Susan Rude from uh, Prairie Rose Meadery in Fargo, North Dakota, and you can stop.